Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, everyone can hear me okay? Is my voice audible? Yes, Pastor. We can hear you. Okay. All right, great. So, uh, shall we start off with a word of prayer? Maybe one of us can please lead a prayer. Can I pray, Pastor? Go ahead, Asha. Dear God, thank you so much, God, for this day. Thank you for everything that you're doing. That, Lord, you are such a faithful God. And you that you are doing, Lord, as we're about to read the book of First Corinthians, God, that we may uh, hit it into our heart and by God, that we may understand what Paul has to say. And through you, Lord, you have spoken to him, God, that we may grow stronger in your knowledge and your wisdom, God. That we are, Lord, that what we've been taught, that we may apply in our life and understand to grow stronger in your love and your nurture, God. Thank you so much for everything. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Asha. All right. So uh, let me just uh, present the, the notes. Okay. So we've been doing... First uh, Corinthians last week we completed First uh, Corinthians eleven and twelve. Uh, in First uh, Corinthians twelve, we talked about uh, you know the whole thing of desiring the gifts, and uh, the Apostle Paul talks about how uh, there are different kinds of gifts for different kinds of uh, functions. So we looked at this the picture there the nine gifts membership gifts and the fivefold ministry gifts and. Uh, and so he's basically advising the church or he's exhorting the church saying, uh, you know, these gifts are given by the Holy Spirit and it is for every believer, yet there are also certain functions that people have. So there is the pastoral calling, there is the evangelist, there's the prophetic, there's the apostolic calling. So uh, he's just differ differentiating between the ministry gifts, the membership gifts, uh, uh, within the church. Now, why is he doing this? Uh, there could be many reasons. One, it could be because we know that there was already division within the church. There was uh, there were complications. There were several issues. So, Paul is basically trying to, you know, uh, lead the church towards understanding the principles that govern a, a church setting or the the congregation. How a congregation should be. Right now, we know that you know they were spiritually quite mature, yet there were things that they were doing which were very, very immature. Right, so he wanted them, especially the congregation, to you know grow in every area. Right, so uh, he closed off chapter twelve. We we'll move into chapter thirteen, and chapter thirteen, uh, First Corinthians thirteen, is the is one of the most uh, wonderful passages in Paul's epistle because we all know it, uh, mostly preached at weddings, uh, talking about the great uh, passage on love. Right? So let's begin with chapter 13 uh, and verse 1 onwards, right? It starts off by the more excellent way, right? So let's look at that, right? Uh, verse 1, do I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but not have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but not have love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but not have love, it profits me nothing. And verse 4 onwards, Paul is characterizing what God's love is all about, right? He says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely, does not seek its own. It is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish. Right? Let's let's just stop here. Uh, 
and see what is Paul talking about here, right? Now, in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul is trying to, you know, uh, inform the church that it's wonderful that there are a lot of gifts, there are a lot of people who are talented, and uh, you, you are already flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. There's a prophetic, there's a word of knowledge, you're flowing in all these gifts. Uh, and But here's the problem. When we do all these things, when we exercise the gifts, when we you know, have membership functions, when we do charitable deeds, when we uh, even offer our body to uh, be burned, which means even willing to martyr ourselves, uh, and all these things, if we do without being motivated or guided by God's love, he says this so powerfully, he says, all this is empty and it has no benefit. Right? What got struck me was, even to the point of offering your own body to be burned, that means we may come to a place of saying, God, I'm, uh, you know, I can, I'm willing to give my life to you. But if it is not governed out of love, it is nothing. It is of no benefit. Now this shows the importance of abiding in love when serving and ministering, right? So whatever we do, we must be governed by this God kind of love, right? Uh, do it out of love because love for people is what will, you know, really guide us in that ministry, in the ministry, right? Uh, in, from verses 4 to 8, he's saying it's uh, love is not, it's, uh, if we are impatient, if we are unkind, if we are jealous, if we are boastful, if we are behaving rudely, if we are self-seeking, self if we are self-promoting, self-centered, irritable, and all of these things, uh, then we are not governed or motivated by love. Now, why is Paul saying this? Why is love superior right? uh, than all these you know, wonderful? Why is love greater than prophetic gift? Right? Why is love greater than being having the apostolic gift? Why is love greater than being just a pastor, pastor of a church? Why is it that way? Because there will come a time, so Paul is trying to inform the you know, exhort the church saying, there will come a time that all of these membership gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit will cease. Everything will stop. It will no longer be in use. But the only thing that will be there is love. And the Bible says in Revelations, they will look upon the one whom they have pierced. In, in heaven, it's, it, heaven is, God is love. Right? So, Heaven is a lovely place. It's, it's full of love. And this is God kind of love, agape kind of love. There's no hatred. There's no jealousy. There's no pride. Right? There's no pastors. There's no apostle. There's no prophet. Nothing in heaven. There's no speaking in tongues, uh, prophetic and word of knowledge and word of wisdom. All those gifts are not there in heaven. right? So there will come a time when all these gifts will cease. But love will remain. Now, this is so powerful, right? So maybe some of us may be thinking, hey, I don't, I can't flow in the prophetic or I can't, uh, I don't have a word of knowledge or, uh, you know, I, I'm not gifted in uh, worship. We may have these different ideas, right? We have these different thoughts that are coming into our mind. Remember this, if you have the love of God, if you are walking in the God kind of love, you have a greater superior gift than all the other things and all the others you can have a great man of god or woman of god but walking in jealousy or anger but you can just be a believer walking in the god kind of love you are doing something greater than what the other person is doing because love is greater than that right remember faith galatians 5 6 faith works through love without love faith breaks down and faith does not produce when there is no love right 
Now, for example, we see that the Lord Jesus, when he ministered to people that he met in his earthly ministry, in many places it says that he had compassion. He loved them. And out of that love, he was able to minister to them and bring healing. So the root or the basis of each of our lives, of each of our ministry, of for everything that we do must be out of love. Now, this is an ongoing process. Right? God knows we are a work in process. We are growing. We are learning. Right? But here's the beautiful thing. God has also given us the Holy Spirit to walk in that God kind of love. Is it possible to walk in the love that Jesus walked in? Yes. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. Right? So let's just look at those characteristics. It's so beautiful. Love is patient and love is kind. Right? Uh, when, when we mean patient, now picture this. Maybe, uh, you know, there's a pastor or a God for, and they've been in ministry for 20 odd years. All of a sudden, there's a young person who comes into the church. Now, it's very easy for us to say, you know, because we know everything from the scriptures, we've gone through different seasons. It's very easy to look at them and say, hey, uh, you know, how come you don't know this? This is so simple. How can you not understand this? It's, you know, this is just basic word of God. How will you be able to you know, understand the greater, bigger revelations of God's word? Now, we must understand that people are from in different levels in their spiritual understanding. Right? Love is patient. Just so much so that how God is patient with us, we are to be patient with people. Right now, does not mean being patient and kind means to you know just say oh you know whatever you say I will do. No, we have to be bold. We have to be firm. We have to be confident. Right? You know when we meet people, uh, maybe we are sharing the gospel with them. Be bold. Be firm. Be confident, because you know who you are. Yet, be gentle and kind. That's that's the balance that we must you know, develop. Uh, don't be harsh, don't be rude, right? Now, there are times the Holy Spirit will minister to us to say a word or, or speak about something to a person. And it may be something very, you know, uh, very stern. And even as we do that, do it with love. Right? Not, not with a pride saying, okay, God is telling me you are this, 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 no. Because eventually we want the person to come to Christ, to turn from their wrong ways and come back to Christ. So love is patient, love is kind. Right? One of the things that for me personally was being patient. Right? Uh, you know, personally, I'm a I'm a person who, you know, wants to get things done. If I plan, I usually plan a week or sometimes. Know, uh, when the year starts, I do a six-month plan, or, uh, and then I break down that six-month plan into three months. And I, I, I like to follow that plan, right? And I, you know, I, I prefer that plan to be followed. And, and then I break down those three months plan into weekly plans. And sometimes when things are not going the way that we expect, we become impatient, right? Uh, but over time, I'm learning that you know it's okay. It's good to plan, but there will be times when you know we must understand that other the people that we are ministering to or the people we are serving need time, right? So we need to walk in patience. Right? Love is not jealous. Now this is this is this is very very important. Right? Uh, we did this in laying the axe to the root of uh, jealousy in the beginning of the semester. Right, jealousy is something that is, you know, just it can just turn us away from God in a matter of moments, right? So we must guard our hearts against jealousy. When we look at somebody else and say, "Hey, you know, they are doing 
maybe they are you know in the worship team or they're they're uh, singing prophetic songs or they are, there's a man of god woman of god you know there's healings and miracles they're manifesting these wonderful signs and we think hey why is it not happening to me how come god is using them it's very easy for jealousy to come into our heart right so when god is working the best way is when god is working through people around you right uh celebrate what is happening in their life right if you see somebody else is you know uh god is blessing them and you see that hey nothing's happening to me celebrate what's happening in their life by saying god thank you that you have blessed them one day you will do that for me as well so what are you doing you're guarding your heart you're saying you are not allowing the enemy to bring jealousy into our heart right? and the perfect perfect example would be you know Saul and king Saul and david right this is a perfect example uh, david killed the mighty goliath the, the people of israel start singing yeah, Saul killed thousands, David killed tens of thousands. That moment, jealousy came into his heart. The Bible says from that moment, he tried to pursue David to kill him. Just because of that jealousy. But what could have Saul done? Saul could have said, God, I thank you that you have taught me that I should not you know, look at people through their appearance and you've taught me that you're still God you know uh, you've used a small boy to defeat this giant and if it's your you know he could have done it the nice way he could have just said okay you know, David you can be the next king and I'm sure God would have allowed him to be the king for the rest of his life and David would have just come into the throne it, it would have just gone in smoothly but jealousy leads to unhealthy competition there is strife all of his life Saul lost his peace all he was doing was instead of running and chasing after the enemies and defeating enemies he was fighting battles that was not worth he was just running and trying to catch david right so love is not jealous we are to guard our hearts against jealousy third one love is not proud arrogant or boastful right what is being proud thinking high more highly of yourself than you ought to think of right now that's not we must be strong we must be confident in our identity in christ but we must also walk in humility right so for example uh you know we can uh god may give us opportunities to you know, preach in many many places right so we must go with confidence, right? We should prepare, uh, you know, prepare the word, prayer, uh, you know, go with confidence and trusting God to work miracles and do wonders, those meetings. But the moment we say, you know, we don't walk in humility and we become arrogant or boastful or proud about it. Hey, uh, there was a time I was not doing anything. Now, now see how I'm, I am here. I'm, they are this pastor is calling me, this ministry is calling me, uh, these people still want me, they pay me so much, they do this, they do that for me. You know, they what's happening? They are losing focus, right? Uh, always, always walk with a humble heart. You know, here's the thing I've noticed, right? When we start off small. Right? So, for example, somebody starting a business or you're starting your own ministry. When you start small, there's nothing to be proud about. But if all of a sudden that ministry grows to thousands of people and, or the business becomes really big all of a sudden, what happens? Pride gets into our heart. Now, look at this. Uh, Lucifer, he was the second in command in heaven. He was so beautiful that he had angels under him and they would all be in awe of of lucifer and the thought just came to him hey i just I, you know, everyone out so in awe of me what happened there 
he thought more highly of himself than what he, than what he had to think of. He should have thought that, hey, God is God and I am just his created being. Right? Be watchful over our words. When we speak, we are not to draw attention to ourselves or the work done through us, but the work done through God. Right? So be very careful. These these are these are you know weeds that can come into our life, right? Love is not love is not rude or ill mannered, right? Uh, while ministering to people in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, be gentle, be loving, be courteous. Show them that you love them. In a time that we are in, and I, I've seen this, I've seen many uh, videos that people have sent me over the past years, and I see it, and my heart breaks because there were many, many of these, you know, wonderful men and women of God, but they have, they were so rude, they've ill-treated uh, the believers. Now there will be times when God will, the Holy Spirit will ask us to you know, do strange things or unusual things, right? That's okay, right? Uh, but then if it's something from our own imagination, the outcome or the fruit will speak of itself. If it's from the Holy Spirit, it will bear fruit in the other person's life. If it's from our own imagination, we're trying to do something, it's not going to bear fruit. Right? So while ministering to people, remember, be polite. Jesus did not was not rude. He was not ill mannered. He, he did not say, uh, you know, you people are like this himself. No. And he, was, he, was, he walked in that love. Right? But was he stern? Yes, he was stern. But he, he, he but he was never rude or ill mannered. Right? So even we as believers, when we are ministering, uh, minister as to be as courteous as possible, right? Uh, one of the things we follow in APC is, you know, when we preach, we don't say you should do this, you should do that, right? It's applying even for us. So we say us, we say we, we should do it. It's for all of us. When we are preaching, it's not that we are we know everything and we are preaching to the congregation. No, as we are preaching, we are learning, right? So come into that submission under the Holy Spirit so that we know that, hey, uh, you know, we're just walking. We're all growing together, right? Then love is not self-centered, self-seeking, self or self-promoting. Now, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to us not to make us look good, not to make us look famous, not to make us look like we are holier than thou, or we are the holiest of all people. No, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given so that we can serve people wherever we are and serve effectively to build people and to glorify Christ. Right? So, so the gifts of the Holy Spirit is given so that we can serve people powerfully, effectively, so that they will see a change in their lives and the Lord Jesus will be glorified. Right? Now, we are not to use the gifts of the Spirit to promote ourselves or to draw people to ourselves. The moment somebody walks out of a service saying and drawn towards the person who is preaching more than the word, I have failed in my preaching. Right? Yes, of course, there will be people who will say, uh, you know, thank you for sharing the word, or you shared the word well. But that's okay. You can just say, okay, praise God, thank you. But if people are drawn to you as a person, and what you and uh, you know what what I spoke, or uh, my my the way I spoke, the the intonation, and all of those things, then uh, it's of no use. Because I've drawn people to myself and I am nothing. Right? 
So we must draw people, not to ourselves, but to Jesus. Right? This is not about us. The more people have been used by God, the greater impact we will have and more people to be ministered to. There's a joy just seeing people's lives changed. And there's a greater joy knowing that their life is changed not because of my preaching or teaching, but because of the love of God on their lives. That's a greater joy. right? So then I'm in freedom. Hey, I could say, hey, it's not, it's not me. It's God. God has just used me as a vessel, so it's not about me. God can use anybody. But the, the, the important point is that they have received and they have heard from you and, and they're glorifying Jesus Christ. And so, very important, right? Even as all of us are ministering, look to draw people to Christ and not to us. Right. Next point. Love is not irritable or easily angered. Right now, this is this is again something that I've been, you know, really walking in, and I want to grow in this area. Right? Now, sometimes, you know, there are things that may go wrong. Uh, you know, maybe we plan something. And there are things that may go wrong. Uh, you know, some of the things that, for me personally, right? If I plan to be at a place, if I, if I have to meet somebody at ten o'clock, I'll be there at nine forty-five, right? And if they don't come at ten o'clock, I start getting frustrated. I, I get irritated. Oh, ten o'clock's the meeting. Got to be there much before that, or Unless you know they're going through some challenge or something, you know, devastating has happened. Right? So sometimes I get irritated or easily angered. Right? I remember there were times when you know people would say, "Hey, oh, you know, I don't have." Uh, I would I would share with people, just talk to them. They'd say, "Hey, I don't have time at all. I work in the office from nine to five. I don't have time to read." Oh, I don't have time for prayer. And I used to get really irritated initially, you know. Uh, uh, I'm just being frank. I really used to get very irritated because I used to work in the IT company. I know it's tiring. You go to 9, nine to 5, you got a job, you get back home, you're tired. Yes. But if you really want to make time, you can make time. And, uh, it, it's not... Uh, you know, there's a saying, right? Uh, time flies, but the good news is you're the pilot. So I used to get really frustrated. So many times I used to tell my friends, you know, hey, if you really want to do something, you can do it. And, uh, you don't have to give any excuse. And I used to you know, say that. Uh, but then over time, I realized that, hey, is it right by me talking this way? But, uh, because I see that I am getting irritated because they are not doing something. Or I am getting easily angered because I expect them to read the word for one hour or to pray for maybe half an hour, spend time in God's prayer. They are not doing it. So I'm getting upset. So then I realized that, hey, it's affecting my life. I'm not walking in the God kind of love. So I had to really make that conscious effort to change. right? And I started saying, okay. My responsibility is to minister to them, give them advice, give them, exhort them, teach them, well, encourage them, and you know, lead them to Christ. Right. Uh, also, you know, there's another example here. For example, if you've been invited to in a place to minister, there were several things that can go wrong. You know, uh, and I've been through so many times, so many kinds of meetings where you know the mic stopped working. Or there's a jarring on the mic, the guitar cable or the musical instrument cable just stop working. Uh, or you know the the drummer will miss the timing to the song. Or you know uh, uh, suddenly there was a power failure. Uh, all these things can get us irritated or angered. Right now, remember if the enemy is attempting to interfere with 
you know, something that is, you know that it's a spiritual thing, spiritual battle, then you can deal with it and you pray against it. But in general, we are to, you know, uh, keep our heart full of love towards people. Right? So even when we go to different, go to different states in our nation of India, uh, you know, there are many states and uh, where you know, the facilities are not very good. You know, they, they could have some old speakers or the mic system may not be as good as the ones in you know, the cities. Uh, sometimes they don't have a mic system or sometimes, you know, the, they don't have fans. There's no AC. Uh, the food may not be good or the food does not suit our body. And, uh, things are not set in place. There's no order. So these things can cause us to become irritable. Right? But we must say to ourselves, hey, I've come here to minister to them. I want to love them. Now, if I get angry and irritated by the things that they're doing, I will not be able to minister out of love. And if I don't minister out of love, it, this whole meeting is of no use at all. And so we must make that effort, conscious effort, to walk in love. To avoid being irritable, right? And there could be many things. You know, it could be within the family. It could be traffic on the road. Uh, it could be the city. It could be our leaders. So many things. Right? And, uh, you know, there was this one season where there were there were a couple of these roads that were being fixed, and it's maximum takes about a month but it's been years but that the road has not fixed sometimes we get so irritated and angry about it uh, but many times i have to say god pray for good leadership that they will you know good leaders who can get these things sorted this is you have given us the you know authority you have given us the uh, you know the rule and reign in this in our nation so Help us to have good leaders, raise up good leaders. And so then what am I doing? I'm freeing my heart from being irritated or easily angry. Right? So it could be anything, but we must guard our heart. Right? Next one. Love has no evil intent. Now, what does it mean, evil intent? Now, when we are ministering in the gifts of the Spirit, we must keep our heart free from desire to control, to manipulate, or take revenge. Right. So, for example, if somebody has done something wrong to you, it's very easy when we are, you know, ministering to manipulate and to to control or to take revenge on them. Right. Never try to use the gift of prophecy or the gift of uh, word of knowledge or word of wisdom to get back at an individual. Right? Your motives should be clean. What is the motive? To be pure, to be genuine, and to seek uh, to glorify the Lord alone. Right? Now, what, do we, what, what is it to control? Love does not control. Now, there will be times when, uh, you know, people, you know, so, for example, there are you know, members of our church and they want to attend a conference that's happening in the city. Many times, many leaders have said, no, don't go to that. Right? Trying to control people. Many times, leaders have pastors, leaders have manipulated people. You do this, you know, if, if, if you sell your property and give that money to the church, God, then the prophetic word comes. God is going to give you seven times more than what you have given. That is called manipulating. If you, you know, give so much time and offerings to the church, God will give you seven times more. I think there's a question. Yes, Shri Kumar, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
uh, I just want to know, as you said now, so is it um, how we will able to know that if a man of God is saying that uh, give your, uh, you know, the portion, and this is something God is saying, and uh, and um, how we can able to know that uh, he's doing it in, in that greed or, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So because uh, Elijah, when he asked that woman, when she was, when he was, um, she was only have her little, but that was directed by God. So, and she, I believe she also understood because he is a man of God. Yeah. So how in the today's circumstances, because now you can find everywhere prophets and apostles. Correct. So how we can understand that, uh, yes, this man of God is genuine and uh, and this is uh, this is not from God. Thank you, Pastor. That's my question. Yes, yes. That's a wonderful, wonderful question, Sri Kumar. And now I think this is a challenge that all of us have, but uh, I'll just I'll just sum up some of the ways that we can understand. Right, one is we all have this spirit of discernment. Right now, the problem is sometimes you know we think okay, the Holy Spirit is in, and we switch off our mind. We only think of the spiritual, and we switch off. Right, we don't think is this something that God would want me to do. Right now, for example. Uh, yes, you brought up the whole thing of uh, uh, Elisha when you know the, the now when somebody is especially when it comes to giving unto God, right? We must always see in the sense that like are they pushing us to do it? Is there a force? The moment a preacher or a pastor is forcing the believers. You do this, only then you will be blessed. Only then God will give you double fold or, or seven fold. I personally will not give. Right? Because God is a God. The Bible teaches us everywhere. God loves a cheerful giver. right? And when people, when, especially when pastors and leaders put a call, put a, you know, uh, a statement like, if you do this, only then God will do it. God will bless you. If you sell your house or if you sell your car, only then God will give you. God will bless you. Then it's like putting a, you know, uh, you, they're putting a, uh, how do I say this? Uh, like, you know, they're putting a condition. condition. Yes. Yeah, thank you for that word. Uh, they're putting a condition. That only if you do this, God will bless you. Now that's not what Jesus said. That's not what Jesus did. I mean, when you look at ministry, that's not what it is, right? We, oh, oh uh, let me give you this example. There was this old woman that I knew of. She was going to a church, and uh, and it was a rural church, a uh, uh, very small church. But minute, but the leader of the church they manipulated her because they knew that she had a couple of you know land uh, in the city and uh, they said you know if you do this uh, god will bless your children you will have a two floor three floor house and all that and in her innocence she sold it gave it to the church and and now the pair, the children came back uh, from work or from different parts of the city saying okay let's you know they had saved up money to build a house and they, they came to their mother and said okay let's start building we have saved up money and the mother says no I, I sold I gave the property away gave the money to the church and the children were so heartbroken they had saved up and done so much now the moment somebody forces if there's a force if there's a push then I would say that it is not from God, right? Because God is not in it for the money, right? uh, and 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 we know that you know it's 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 the heart that God sees. So, uh, in terms of this giving, always leave it open. Now there will be times the Holy Spirit will say, uh, "Tell this person, this is what he has to do. He has to go, you know." Uh, probably take half his uh, income from the business and give it to this ministry uh, and this is and, uh, and this is how God will bless now there's a way of putting that across right 
uh, it's a way. Hey, uh, uh, if I'm ministering to somebody, a businessman or a businessman, I would say, brother, sister, this is what I sense the Lord telling me, but I leave the decision up to you. You have a business, and I sense the Lord saying that if you give 50% of it to the ministry, right, you can give it to any ministry. If you give it to the minute, give it unto the Lord. I sense that God is saying that He will bless you even more. He will increase you from every side. Why don't you go home? Think about it. Pray about it. See if this is what God is leading to you towards. And then you can feel free to make your decision. The decision is yours. That's how I would do it. Now, how does this, this sound and how does this sound? Brother, God is saying, you have a business, you have to give 50% of it. When you give it, God will bless you. And you have to give it. Only then God is going to bless you. You see, there's a difference. on. It's the same message put across in two different ways. Right? So again, it's all about how we also, you know, we speak. We speak with kindness and gentleness. Uh, we can put across the same message in a gentle, kind way, honoring, respecting the person. But the problem is, uh, Sri Kumar, is right now, pastors and ministers of God have become so great that they feel they are, uh, they have the right to do it. They have the right to ask and to say it, and nobody can question them. And especially in our nation, nobody's going to question. And it's wonderful how the Apostle Paul, we did in chapter, in the previous chapter, I think in chapter 9, the rights of an apostle. And Paul says, I did not ask anything from you. Right? So you always leave that option open. Uh, the moment there are conditions, I would think about it. Right? Uh, but yes, you can always put it across the right way. Right? I hope that helps you, uh, Sri Kupa. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, everyone can see the screen. I think I'll have to stop. Just a moment. Okay. Uh, next one. Love is truthful, honest, and holy. So handle the gifts of the Holy Spirit with honesty, with purity, and holiness. Right? Uh, and these are the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Oh, so it's it's not that oh I am the greatest I can prophesy. No, but there's a sense of awe. There's a sense of holiness. God, the God, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, His Spirit re residing in me, just a regular person, and His gifts expressed in and through me. It's not a place of boasting but it's a place of just being in awe of him that God's presence the Holy Spirit is making uh, you know ministering through us now here's the thing if God is speaking do it in sincerity and truthfulness if God is silent do not make up something that is fake do not be pressurized by faking things or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God does not anoint limitations or imitations. Sorry. Now, for example, every Sunday you're getting a prophetic word and you're ministering. There's word of knowledge. There is, uh, you know, the word of uh, wisdom. There is prophetic word. There's gifts of healing. Every Sunday you're ministering to people. Now, maybe one Sunday, you're not getting anything. You're saying, God, speak to me. But there's nothing. Now, you can't say, oh, how will I close the church service now? They all are waiting for one prophetic word, or they're all waiting for a word of knowledge. What do I do? What you have to do is pray and close. No need to be pressurized to making up things. Right? Uh, it's OK. Remember that 
uh, you know, it's the gift, it's the Holy Spirit that is speaking to us, right? I'll tell you one shocking thing that I had got to know, and uh, it really, it really surprised me to the levels that people can go to. This happened in our nation, the city of Bangalore, in uh, south of India. There was this big conference or a meeting that was happening, and this man was, you know, supposedly uh, a, a man who was very prophetic in nature. Uh, and he would call out people through their names and just minister to them. And, you know, uh, everyone knew about it. Many people from many churches would come for that two days meeting. And now, a friend of mine was a volunteer for his one of his conferences. Right? And he came up to me and he, he, we were speaking. And uh, he was talking to me about the gifts of the Spirit about word of knowledge, prophecy. And I knew that he had some questions, but he was not willing to ask me. Uh, he was just, something was holding him back. But here's what he asked me. At the end, he could not hold up. He asked me this. He said, do you think people can prof get words of knowledge through you know, their name and uh, date of birth? I said, yes, God can do it. God can call people from their name, use the date of birth. I said, why do you ask me? He said, no, because. In these conferences of this man, whoever enters into the conference writes their name, number, date of birth, and the place they're coming from. And that all that book, before the conference starts, half an hour before the conference, that, that the details written down goes to the green room where the preacher is sitting. And many times I have seen him read through all the people's names, make notes on the phone, or just write down a few, just memorize a few. And then he would go onto the stage, preach, do everything. And at the end of the service, you know, just begin to call the names, what he has heard. Is there a David and uh, you're from you know, this city? This is your full name. This is your date of birth. And when I heard that, I was really surprised. So what is it? There is, it is a cooked up word of knowledge which the Lord is not going to anoint. He does not anoint invitations. He does not anoint things that are fake and made up. He anoints only that which is expressed by the Holy Spirit. Right? So just be faithful. Serve faithfully. No need to put up a show. Right? Last uh, last couple of few more. Uh, love holds up, believes in, hopes and endures. So when ministering the gifts of the Holy Spirit, in, when dealing with difficult si situations, sin, failure, or wrong intentions, our intention must be that we are bringing that individual to God for God to do the best in his or her life, right? Look at how Jesus exposed the sin of the uh, sin and problem uh, of the Samaritan woman. Right? She was hopeless. Uh, she was in, she was sad. She was burdened. But after meeting Jesus, the Lord Jesus exposed her sin. Said, "Hey, you're not only." Really Married seven times, but the one who you are living with is not even your uh, husband. But through the end of that whole thing, what happened? She will, she, she goes back and she says, "I have found the one who is the Messiah." The end result was she was in awe of the Messiah, and she became uh, the tool to reach out to the entire village. Jesus exposed this her sins, exposed her problem. But he also let them know that in your hopeless situation, in your feeling of rejection, you know, God can change things for you. So when we are ministering to people, don't bring people down. Our, our goal is to bring people to Christ, lead them to Christ. Right? And love never fails. Okay, this is the last one, then we'll take a break. Love never fails. 
the Greek word fails means ekpipto, uh, which is which means to be driven out of one's course or to become inefficient. Now, if we put all this together, uh, we get the understanding that when we walk in love, we will walk the course, we will run the race, the race that God wants us to run. We'll run it the right way. Walking in love help us, helps us to walk the right path. When we walk in love, we will not be powerless, we will not be dishonored, we will not become useless, but we will have impact and we will have effect upon people that we meet. People will recognize the anointing of God when we walk in love because love never fails us. The God kind of love will bring honor, glory, uh, and make us walk the right path in every area of our life. And so this is so wonderful. So when we are ministered or governed by the love of God, uh, you know we, we know that we are in the right path and uh, nothing can go wrong because God is with us. And so these are so powerful. Paul is exhorting the church and he brings this chapter to a close. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back in 10 minutes. Let's come back at 10.5 and then we'll continue with the class. Thank you.